It's 95.5 KLOS and 955 KLOS.com. Stu, Studio M, our favorite new uh, interview location. And today my guest is someone very well known, I think, to most who own a television from Rockstar Supernova. Delana is with us today. There's a couple of gigs coming up uh, in, in short order. You're opening for the motels at the Brixton. Yes. Uh, yes. There's, uh, you're headlining at the House of Blues uh, in a couple. Let's get the dates. Uh, the 22nd is the Brixton show, which is... A week from yeah, next Friday, tomorrow, right? Yeah. yeah, Friday the 22nd. Uh, Quattro de Mayo at the House of Blues Sunset. Quattro and de Mayo. Quattro like de Mayo. Uh, yes. Another gig later in May at Molly Malone's, which is an awesome little spot. Have you I love Molly's. Isn't yeah. it great? It's really awesome. One of my favorite venues because it's always intimate. Yeah. And the sound's always amazing. Yes. I love the sound there. It's very inspiring. Some of my best sounding shows and actually um, performing shows vocally right. have been at Molly's. Uh, whenever I need to refer anything um, to people, I send them to my YouTube clips from Molly, Molly Malone. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, getting into kind of, you know, some of your backstory, it's v very interesting. Uh, you're from South Africa and um, didn't grow up having a whole lot of uh, creature comforts, uh, shall I say, or at least that's what I've gotten uh, from it was it a really a hard life and describe your uh, your upbringing there. Yeah, my upbringing was uh, definitely nothing compared to the upbringing I see living in America. The kids today mm -hmm. in America they just have it all. You know, I th I think they're way spoiled. Over Certainly here. the city kids. Yeah, yes. they they uh, they take things for granted. They, I, th I feel that they don't appreciate a lot in life. They're given things. I mean. To even imagine getting a car when I turned 16 is like out of this world for me. I, really? And everyone I meet here, oh, my kid's turning 16, I'm going to have to get the car. And it always just hits me in the face, you know? I didn't get one. You didn't? No. Sweet. No. <laughs> You're one of the normal ones. I was in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. I was stealing cars and crashing them into rivers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I swear. Crashing them into rivers, getting all my friends to uh, push the car back up so my mom and dad didn't wake up and then I got busted. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I, I had a really tough upbringing, actually. Um, but at the time, it didn't seem tough to me because that was life in growing sure. up in South Africa. Um, it's just living here, I, I realized that my upbringing was a lot different. Was it difficult for you to uh, get your hands on, I, I mean, you play guitar and you've got an, an incredible vocal instrument. Thank you. Uh, did, did you afford training? I mean, how did those things kind of form in those years when you didn't have a lot? Absolutely no training whatsoever until I got onto Rockstar Supernova and we had to get vocal lessons, lessons from the uh, vocal coach on oh. the show and I was so opposed to it. I remember meeting her the first time in the women's bathroom uh -huh. and I saw her washing her hands and I oh. walked up to her and I said, so you're the vocal coach. And I said, I just want you to know, lady, I'm only doing these lessons because I have to, but I don't want you to teach me anything. I have my thing down and, you know, you're going to change me. And she just smiled and said, that's fine, Delana. And by the end of the show, I was in love with her. Uh. We're still in contact. I haven't had any more She surprised lessons. the heck out of you, didn't she? She did. I, she, I, I really learned a few handy things from her. Now, in Holland, uh, I didn't get a lot of the details, but you really met with quite a bit of success there. I and did. you were there for about five years or, yeah, or so? Yeah, you did your homework, Steve. Yeah, well, I'm proud you know, of you. <laughs> so yes, I did. I'm wondering, uh, you know, was it, uh, how was it leaving Holland where maybe you were, uh, you know, a big fish in a not quite as big pond for coming to America? I mean, it seems, you know, like a really brave choice. It was really tough for me, to be honest with you. I, um, I, I came to the States and right as I was leaving Holland, I was kind of at the peak of my career. I had songs in the top ten. On the radio. On the radio. You can't walk down the street. Day. Basically, but the Dutch are so cool. They don't care who you are. They're not starstruck, and that's what I love about Holland. You can uh -huh. go anywhere, and people treat you like anybody else. Um, but, you know, I, I had done movie title tracks. I was on TV, on a similar to MTV station over mm -hmm. there all the time. So, you know, I, I came to the States, and all of a sudden, I couldn't find musicians that were on that same caliber. Of course, I moved to Houston, so duh. Yeah, why, uh, why did you <laughs> move to Houston? To Houston, Texas. <laughs> I was married at the time. I'm divorced now. Okay. Um, I was married to a guy from America, and his work transferred him to to Houston from from Scotland. I moved from Holland to Scotland, from mm -hmm. Scotland to Houston, Texas, 
And so um, I, I lived in Houston for about five years, and I really quickly decided that I was not going to start a band over there. And after a serious bike accident I was in, I woke up with an aha moment and said, I have to get into my music again, and I'm just going to do a one-chick show. And that took a lot of courage for me to get up on stage all by myself. Yeah. But within <coughs> six months, I was the most booked artist in Houston. I played, <coughs> excuse me, for two years, like seven, eight gigs a week yeah. by myself and made tons of money, I had amazing shows, just awesome followers, wow. people, venues booked out in advance. And so then another big leap of faith in yourself to come out here, I, I understand you actually saw, uh, you were watching a rock star in excess and thought, I can... Pfft. I'm yeah, yeah. I got very I uh, frustrated it. watching that season. <laughs> I was like, damn, man, I know I can do this. I know I can do this. And, you know, I was 35 at the time, and I thought, if I don't try something now, you know, I'm getting old, and yeah. you know, this might be my last opportunity. So for the first time in my entire life, I put myself out there and sent my stuff out myself. You know, I've, I've never had the courage to promote myself. I think it's vain and egotistic and it's, it's a stupid thing well, and it's necessary it's part of my <laughs> upbringing you know yeah. so i guess so that's why i'm really humble i think i'm a very humble artist and um so i stained my stuff in thinking oh, they're never even gonna get a chance to get my package and about six months later i'd forgotten all about it i got a call from it, them out of the blue and mm. said they said uh, we love your stuff so much that we want you to just come we're going to schedule a, a, an audition for you you don't have to stand in the lines and all that crap so yeah wow and there i was and still thinking i'm never going to make it on to the top 15 and then i make it you know all always the, run all around. the way i'm still still confused. let me ask you um so you know your your trek on that show is pretty well known and documented um uh when you didn't make you know when you didn't win at all and get into that band. A couple of things occurred to me. Well, the first one is the what they the comment that came was actually very interesting, and to me it seemed like uh, summed up. It meant you're bigger than this. We feel like we're backing you, whereas Lucas uh, feels like you know he's more actually part of the band. Like oh, so really that's what they're saying. You we'll feel like we'll be backing you. Yeah. yeah. And did you? Uh, how did that come off to you at that time? Um, I felt very flattered actually and I totally agreed because I do feel that way. I always did. Um, yeah. The minute I heard their original material, mm -hmm. I knew that this wasn't the band for me. And it was tough to keep up the um, energy to want to get as high as I could without being the winner. Right. You know, so <clears throat> ultimately I got exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be the runner-up to get the exposure, right. but I did not want to be the winner because I couldn't imagine myself singing that material. It works for them, it doesn't work for me. Uh -huh. So when I heard that, I felt really flattered and I, uh, I totally agreed and I actually thanked them because I talked to the guys backstage, you know, and Tommy, all of them said to me, we just see you being an artist by yourself. like A solo artist, yeah, not a just, band. Deserve, yeah. And of course, I would love to have a band band, you know, but right. it's because of the show, it's really hard for me to get a band and not be Delana, the solo chick. So... I'm kind of in a dilemma as far as that goes, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I'm just very thankful that I didn't win that show. Um, I'm going to, probably in about three months from now, I'm going to sit down and pick all the best songs and release a single with a video, hopefully first, and then just come out with the record, the full album. I want to plan it for like late November. So it's ready for the holidays. Ready for the holidays. Good, yeah. shrewd planning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, as I said, she's got a couple of great shows coming up. You're opening up for uh, Martha and the Motels on the 22nd yeah. at the Brixton and the Quattro de Mayo show ought to be... Uh, that's like the first time you're headlining House of Blues, isn't it? Yes. I'm Are you nervous so about excited. that? No, not nervous at all. Very, very, very excited. excited to do it. Good. I mean, I'm always nervous the minute before going onto the stage. Right. I'm nervous to the point where I almost throw up every single time. Really? It doesn't matter where I'm playing. Molly like me, Malone, right before I get an interview in here. Uh, you really? Oh, that's what happened earlier. It's butterflies. That back there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're clearing your throat. You're early. <laughs> awesome. Well, so. uh, we're going to have to get you back in because we, uh, we're going to have you play some music, and uh, that's not going to happen today. And also, yeah. we didn't get to really touch on your acting career, which is also a significant thing that's happening. So, yes. uh, Delana, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, Stuart. We'll look forward to the next time. Yeah, next time I'll make a noise. Goody. It's 955 <laughs> KLOS, 955 KLOS. Dot com. See ya.